welcome to Off the Shelf. Tonight I'm also reading part of uh, Chapter 9 2 Resident Evil Zero Hour. Enjoy. <clears throat> he watched them stock up on ammunition, both the impressed and disappointed by their fortitude. After another consultation with their maps, they started upstairs presumably for the observatory. Although the children could hear their voices, they could not make out their words. He'd had the children search out the tablets that would be needed, had had the tablets taken to the doors that led to the observatory. Unless Billy and Rebecca were entirely moronic, which they'd already proven that they were proven they were not. They would figure out how to trigger the structure's rotation, leading them closer to their escape from where they would move on the lab move on to the laboratory hidden behind the chapel. He wondered what they would find there in Marcus's laboratories, more to steal perhaps. He wanted them to uncover what they could could about Umbrella's true nature but was not pleased to see them picking through the sad remnants of Marcus's brilliant career. He stood through he still thought of the laboratories as Marcus's. Though Marcus had been gone for a decade, the entire complex had been shut down after the manager's disappearance. But recently Umbrella had opened it all. Uh, Umbrella had reopened it all. The labs, the treatment plant, the training center, none of the None had been fully functional when the virus had hit. They were being run by skeleton crews of maintenance men, watched over by a handful of middle management hopefuls. Nonetheless, the company had lost a number of loyal employees. Billy and Rebecca moved, moved through the east rooms on the first floor, floor and back out to the lobby, then headed to the second floor. They found the door that that would take them to the third easily enough, entering the stairwell with weapons drawn, their youthful faces determined and seemingly unafraid. He watched as they started up the stairs, emotionally torn. <coughs> he wanted to see them succeed and see them die. Was there a way to have both? They had managed the Eliminator series easily. Although the primates had been weakened by hunger and neglect, how would they fare against the hunters or the proto-tyrant? What if they came to where he and the children waited and watched? What would they do? The young man frowned, unhappy with the thought, sensitive to his moods. A number of the many slid up his legs, across his chest, gathering in a kind of embrace. He pet them, reassured them by touch, that all is well. <clears throat> if the two adventurers actually made it to the nest, still an unlikely premise, he would let them pass, of course, so that they might spread the story of Umbrella Sins. Or perhaps I'll kill them, he said, shrugging. He would decide when, if it occurred, to say that he was indifferent to their fate was untrue, as he waited for the death of Umbrella to unfold. Watching Billy and Rebecca had become a pleasure, and he was most interested to see what would happen to them. But he would see them dead before he let them hurt the children again. They had reached the top of the stairs, were cautiously peering around the railing. Searching for movement, the young man suddenly remembered the centurion hiding in the walls of the breeding pool and wondered if it would come out to see who had invaded its territory. Billy and Rebecca had best hope not if the Eliminators were but pawns in this game. The centurion was one of his knights. The young man eagerly leaned in to watch. And that is part of chapter 9. I will read you chap the rest of this chapter next time. Good night, or good day that is.